Okay, so we have just given the directions. We're about to bring our kids into the classroom. I'm so excited. I'm in the room, kind of waiting for them to line up so that we can press the record. We want to get the reactions when they come into this classroom. on my pirate day. After watching my vlog with the pirate day setup, so many of you had questions about how I implemented it, what were some different things that I did with the pirate day, how did the activities go, so I'm so excited to actually be sitting down with you and kind of walking you through the entire day itself. Um, I will also add in a few clips here and there so that you can kind of get an idea and a picture of what it is that I'm talking about. So. Um, to start off, let's talk about the actual purpose of this day. So the purpose of it was to create a very highly engaged day for my kids where they were motivated, they were focused, they were on task, but that the curriculum itself, what they were doing, was going to be pretty difficult. They needed to be 100% focused and they were working towards a goal. Typically, like whenever, you know, think of it like a video game, like whenever you give students the, the end, you know, hey, if you get to this point, you're going to get this, you know, they get very motivated with that. And so we told them and we said, hey, you know, if you guys can complete all of these tasks, your goal is to try to get to the treasure first. And that is extremely motivating in and of itself. So that was the whole purpose behind this day was just to create a very highly motivated highly engaged on task but also with a very big chunk of everything that we had been teaching um, since the beginning of the year so here is how the idea came about um, I was at the Dollar Tree and I randomly saw these like pirate hats and I said oh those would be really cool to do a pirate day and I do remember seeing that um, Hope King had done a pirate day and I think it was last year maybe it was last year maybe and so when she had done her pirate day she didn't really talk in depth a lot about um, the tasks that she had done I do remember her doing a periscope but I just that periscope has since then disappeared so whenever I saw the pictures of her pirate day I said wow that's really really cool um, I remember long time ago I used to love Pirates of the Caribbean before they had come out with like 16 of them and then you were like I'm really over Pirates of the Caribbean but I remember that very first one like I was really into it and I totally loved it um, so I told my partner's teacher I said hey I really want to do this um, let's make it about pirates because well I mean this is none other than like a really great time to do it because we could find a lot of pirate stuff um, and at Target I had found you know like the little eye patches so I figured, wow, okay, I can really do this. You know, I can I can get those eye patches, the kids can use them, and we can make this really highly engaged day for our kids with some type of a purpose towards the very end of it. Um, and she agreed. So we kind of got to planning. And the first things that we did was after we kind of had our idea, which was Pirate Day, once we had that idea of Pirate Day, we said, okay, well, what is it that we want our kids to do? Um, and as many of you um, who watch my videos all the time know that all of our kids are kind of on different levels. You know, they're all working on different skills because we strongly believe that, you know, if a kid gets something, we're not going to make them sit through two or three weeks listening to instruction on something that they already understand. So we try to make sure that we're 
very much customizing and individualizing their learning to make it fit for what they need. So our kids are in different groups and they're all working on different skills. And so we said, okay, well, let's, let's kind of plan it out. And we just took a piece of sticky notes and we said, all right, l let's see where our groups are. And I told her to kind of start with her math groups because her math was a little, it's a little harder. In reading, you can kind of manipulate and make it fit for all the other groups. So it ended up turning out that the groups that were for reading, and I think we had like a couple of them that were probably like two or three kids, and some of them were a little bit bigger with five or six kids inside of a group. But for the most part, Wherever they were working on in math with their little group, they were kind of on that exact same level for reading. So it worked out perfectly. And once we had them grouped up, we said, okay, well, I know that I'm working on point of view, theme, you know, some kids are working on problem and solution. I have other kids that are working on summaries, on construction, constructing a summary. I have other kids who are still working on identifying the plot. So... We kind of started like writing those down on sticky notes and said this is kind of where we need to start focusing in. And then once we had those different activities planned out and as far as what they were working on, that's where we said, okay, um, how do we want to, for them to collect all of this information? Because we want to we want to have a way for them to keep track of everything that they're working on when they're going throughout this entire day. Because it's going to be chaotic. I mean, we knew. We knew from the get-go that it was probably going to be absolutely chaotic. Um, so we sat down and we said, all right, let's do it as a journal. Because I know for me personally, I will want to go back and kind of reteach some of those things that I'm focusing on with them in reading. That way, if I have it in a journal, I can just pull out those activities. And then we can really talk about it, get a little bit deeper into that text and um, review some of those skills within our small groups the very next week. So I said, well, what better way of doing it? If, you know, pirates, you think about it, they're out in sea, they probably keep a journal. So let's do a pirate journal. And that's exactly where we went next. We started creating our pirate journal. We said, all right, how many tasks do we each want to have? I think I did four tasks which I'm already going to tell you was way too much. I would not go about doing four tasks again. Um, not that the four tasks were too much. It was just how many problems within each task was what really made it difficult. I had four tasks. She had three math tasks and then we had two science tasks. One consisted of a STEM, which actually no one got to the STEM activity that day. We actually pushed it on to the next, I think that Monday, and then said we would just do it then because we were not able to get it completed. So um, we sat down and I said, okay, in this group, they're going to work on this, this, this. This group, this is what they're working on. This group may need more support, so I'm going to give them anchor charts to be able to look at that type of thing. And I just kind of came up with my with my activities based upon what they were specifically working on. What were the things that I was teaching with each of those groups? And then she did the exact same thing with her math tasks. Um, science, everyone got the exact same one because everyone learns the exact same thing in science. So once we had an idea of the actual activities itself, and then I said, well, how can I make this more fun? How can I make this more engaging than just giving them passage after passage after passage? Because that was the thing. I wanted to make this extremely, like, highly engaged activities that they would really, really enjoy. So when I sat down and started looking at some of the things, I, I kind of sat down with, like, my book. And I said, well, what are some things that pirates do? Well, if they're out at sea, I'm assuming they have to fish. So I put fish down and I said, I mean, and pirates like to get into fights, right? So I put fights down and then I said, well, what are some other things that they like to do? They like to fish, they hunt for treasure. We wrote that down. They get into fights um, and they dig for, you know, they dig for things. They dig for treasure, they bury bones, that type of thing. So we wrote all of those ideas down going along that what fit our worth theme, if that makes sense. So after we had all of those, I said, well, you know, my group, they could go fishing for theme. So they had a task card in their envelope and it told them what color fishes to go fishing for. So that's how they would incorporate that fishing portion, which again was just really highly engaging and they just thought it was super fun. 
Um, the next one that was like the punching part, I had a punching out plot or no punching out point of view. So for the punching, we had punching out point of view and the kids got to go one person like they drew straws. So I, that's a kind of another way that I had to figure out, well, who was going to be the one that punched because I have 12 circles and I was like 40 some kids in my class. So there's no way each of them are going to be able to do it. So I had like little straws and the kid who got the shortest straw was actually the one who got to punch. So they would punch and then they'd have to point, pull out the point of view um, strips and they had, it was always some type of a task, whether it was taking it out of some type of a ball, putting it together as puzzle pieces, there was always something. Once they did that, they would have to put the sentences together and then go and complete the point of view. Um, I think, and then the science was digging. So we had um, corn inside of a swimming pool. We would have done sand, but let me tell you, that would have been very hard to get out of my carpet. So we chose not to do sand and we did corn instead. So we had a bunch of corn inside of the swimming pool and my partner teacher had cut out bones that was clip art and on those bones she had different questions that the kids would have to answer using an app that incorporated some of that technology. Um, and the kids had to go digging for the bones and putting them together. Now there was like three sets of these. So they would have gotten the same bone and then they would have realized, oh wait, well we already have that one. So they had to throw that one back inside of the, the pool, the sand, and uh, pull out and look for other ones. So those were just some of the ways that we try to incorporate it. Um, I'm gonna back up just a little bit because I wanna talk to you guys about the overall arching, what were they trying to achieve? So in between all of these different tasks that they had, after they would complete a task, they had to go and check with the teacher to see if it was correct. Um, once they had it and it was correct, I, myself or my partner teacher would take out their next task and give it to them. In that task envelope was a piece to their map and the next task that they had to complete. So all along they're getting pieces to their map that would show them where their hidden treasure was because we told them they needed to be the first to get to the treasure. So there were 12 treasures, hidden treasure boxes hidden around the school um, and we asked teachers to participate in this and they were very kind and very excited about participating and the kids got to um, go through and find their treasure using their map um, and their map the way I decided to do it was I just took a clip art and I just blew the clip art up onto a piece of paper and then on the other side once I had that color like printed out in color on the other side I took a school map and then just glued it down and then just put a little X with the highlighter and then I laminated it and cut them all at weird shapes. Um, so that way, you know, everybody's map was a little bit different, but then they were either looking at the school map or they were looking at the real map on the other side trying to figure it out. And then they would have to eventually like figure out, oh, I have to flip it to be able to see the school map to know exactly where I'm supposed to go. So that was their like overarching, this is what I'm trying to accomplish today type goal. So, so far I've talked about the purpose. I've talked about the idea behind um, our unit. And then I've also talked about a little bit about how we went about grouping it and setting it up. Um, now I'm actually gonna talk about the real setup of the entire pirate day. So we wanted to keep all 48-ish kids in one room. Um, so we moved out a ton of furniture out of my room and I covered the walls. One side looked like a beach, the other side we covered it with brown paper and we had fishnets everywhere. A lot of the products that we were using came from Oriental Trading, um, the Dollar Tree, Party City, um, I think we found some at Target as well. So those are the type of places that we went to to try to find some of the materials for this. And yes, it was just a little bit pricey, but you also have to think that we're gonna save a ton of this is able to be reused. So we wouldn't have to pay for it next time. Um, the only things that we did not save were going to be like the masks that you see in on top of the tables. Um, and then we did not say any, save any of the paper. We did save the beach backdrop or the ship backdrop. So we did save that. And um, all the nets and things like that were all able to be saved. So 
Everything else in the like the tablecloths, those were the plastic ones from the Dollar Tree. Those we did not see because we could just buy those. They were a dollar, not a big deal. So um, we moved everything out and we made sure we had enough tables for each of the kids. Um, my husband created a ship using a huge box, um, which we spray painted and then we covered some of it up with paper. Um, and then we just wanted to make it look like an actual ship. I had music going on that was from the Pirates of the Caribbean, the first movie um, from their soundtrack. And then I had the lights that were kind of, you know, a little bit darker because we had put fabric that went draping around over the lights. So it kind of added to that mood of Pirate Day. And uh, yeah, so I mean, we put little gadgets and gadgets kind of around with between the skulls and the, the coins and the necklaces that were kind of everywhere. And the we used um, Spanish moss that was just kind of draped on the tables as well, just to give it that feel of it is a ship. And uh, what we did was the most important part of it that I think that we ended up doing was we took buckets. We had 12 different buckets and inside of those 12 different buckets were the task folders. So each crew had their own set of task folders and there were four reading tasks, three math tasks, and then two science tasks. And on their actual envelopes for their tasks, it said their actual crew number. So crew one, crew two, crew three, and they were all in their individual buckets and they were literally on the inside of our ship. So it just kind of lined the inside of our ship when you would walk behind it, you would see all of those buckets there. So once we had those kind of set up, this is the kind of another, this was another way that we really thought about it. So if you were pretty much learning reading in the morning, that's the task that you would start with. If you were learning with math in the morning, that is the task that you would start with. Um, so we weren't having everybody doing reading and me having to check all of these different crews in a reading. And then all of the same ones were now in math and so she would be bombarded. So we wanted to make sure that we had kind of half and half. So if you normally worked in reading in the morning, that's the task you were working on. If you worked in math in the morning, that's the task that you started with. And then you would end up flip-flopping towards, you know, midday or something whenever you, your crew completed all of those tasks. Um, and that worked really, really well as well. So we also went on ahead and made huge um, printouts of the crew members that were in each crew. So it would say crew one and it had a list of all the members in that crew with kind of a map a map um, background on it. And we went on ahead and set out each of the crews on those tables. And we had those papers all ready to go and we set out their very first task as well. So when they walked into the room and they did not walk in in the first place and I'll get back to that. When they walked in, they would know where they sat and then they would have their first task ready to go. So we weren't wasting any of that time. Um, when the kids actually got into school that day, they went directly into uh, my partner teacher's room. We did not let them go into my room. We wanted them to be completely surprised. So all of the kids went into their room and they're all like, what's going on? What's happening? Why are they dressed like that? And they're like, oh, okay. So they knew something was up, but they had no idea leading up to this. When all of the kids were in there, they had an activity to complete and they were working on those activities. And of course, our partner, my partner teacher and I are in our outfits. So we are all dressed like pirates. And when we went in there, we told them, we are recruiting a crew. We need a crew for our ship. Everyone wants to be a part of our ship, but we're only gonna pick one crew. One crew is going to be the winner. One crew is going to find the treasure first. And that is the crew that we will pick to join us on our voyage. So we told them, we said, well, we gotta get you ready and gotta get you you know, set up to be pirates. As pirates, we kind of gave them some verbiage. We said, "Arr," and they say, shiver me timbers and on and on and on. So we went through and kind of did our pirate talk with them. And then we said, well, now we have to get you set up with your crew and you have to make you look like a pirate. So we went out and bought bandanas. So the kids got an eye patch and they got to wear a bandana, however they chose to wear it. And then they were assigned to their crew and they got their journal. So they were given their journal, they were told the crew that they were in and they were all dressed up, ready to go. So when we entered, they knew to go and find their crew map of where they were going to be sitting for their entire day for their tasks. 
And um, so we had all of those set up. And so as soon as they got in, they all sat down, we called attention, and I had a little bell. And so as soon as I rang that bell is when we said, go. And so they all of a sudden just started opening it up and getting busy. And they started working, 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 working. As they were finishing the task, they would bring it up to whoever it was. So if they were working on a reading task, they would bring it up to me. If they were working on a math task, they would take it to my partner teacher. When they brought it up, they had to get it checked. And we kind of roughly skimmed over it to make sure that they weren't just trying to go through it really, really quick. So we skimmed over it and said, yes or no. If they got a yes, the bell rang and so the kids were like, what's happening? Why is the bell ringing? And so we would ring it and say, crew blank is moving on to this task. So we would want them to go a little bit faster so they weren't just sitting there and lagging and talking and just having a good time and not getting their work done. You know, they were hearing bells going off all the time. So they were trying to tr constantly trying to make sure that they were on top of it and getting their task complete. So once their bell rang saying that they've moved on to another task, I'd take their envelope, I'd give them the next envelope, which were all pretty much placed in sequential order inside their bucket. So if I knew if they gave me reading task one, that went to the very back. Reading task two was right on top and I gave it to them. So there wasn't any type of lag between me trying to give them their next task. Um, and then they got right to work. And inside of it was, you know, either a task card or just something explaining uh, it was materials to cut out and to print or as passages, anything that they needed for that task was inside of that folder. So once they did that, um, they were just kind of competing and working on them constantly. And they were so engaged with it. And we had so many people walking into our rooms and just saying, you know, this is amazing. We've never seen so many kids who are so excited about learning, who are engaged, who are on task and who are just happy. I mean, they were happy to be there and that's what we want. We wanted them to be really happy to be there. We wanted them to be really interested in what they were doing. So as they were finishing up, they were keeping their little map pieces. They were in charge of keeping their map pieces to be able to put together their map and find their treasure at the very end of the day. Um, we had a few groups who did finish. Like I said, I think I did way too many tasks for reading instead of would have done just three and then she probably would have done three um, and here's another reason why was because during these tasks randomly we would have cannonballs being fired and we would say batten down the hatches hurry everyone drop grab a cannonball and they'd have to pop a cannonball which were in these big black balloons they would have to pop it and complete the math equation that was on it and it could have been blank minus or blank plus 39 equals 72. And they had to figure out what the answer it was and write it inside of their journal. So they were constantly being thrown different obstacles along the way um, to just, again, keep them engaged and keep them excited so that they weren't getting bored and getting sidetracked at the same time. So when they did find, finally get to the very end of it, um, we ring the bells and really, really loud and we call all their attention and everyone just kind of hollered and hip hip hooray and just clapped and cheered them on, congratulated them, which I felt like was the best part of the entire day about how supportive each of the other groups were towards their classmates for completing. Even if they weren't first, they still congratulated them and cheered them on and said, you guys did great, you're wonderful, congratulations. Um, so then we told them to go, once they had completed their map, we gave them the last piece after they had finished, they, they put it together and they went to a place in the school where another teacher had their treasure. So they had the treasure box and once they brought back the treasure box, we gave them a key to it, they opened it up and inside we just had some chocolate coins that they had to split evenly amongst themselves. Um, so the kids were really excited, really engaged, and they really loved it. The tasks of just, you know, having to dig through the corn and there being multiple things in there, having tons of different fish that they had to go and fishing for, um, for the theme, they really loved, loved, loved that one, just being able to fish. And they were so good about taking turns too. So if one person went first and the next person went and next person went, so they were really great about that. And even with the punching out the point of view, they did a phenomenal job with that. They were working together, making sure that their teammates were, you know, on task and they were right along with them. We did have a few little hiccups, again, just with, with it being that we had so many tasks. 
And then at the same time that um, we did have kids who would get left behind because we did have kids who went to music that day. It was just, you know, different pullout situations. So feelings were getting hurt, but we, we took care of it and it was fine and they moved on and they continued working really, really hard. So those are some things that I think that we'll kind of think about the next time we do it. And even if you are considering doing something like this, you don't have to do it in a day like we did. Um, we just needed to move on to different curriculum that next week. So we wanted to be one and done and then not have to stress out about it and feel like we were getting behind um, for things that we needed to cover. So um, if you were going to choose to do something like this, you could span it over a week time and then just make one activity or two activities a day and then be done with it after a week or three days or two days. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, one huge day in and of itself. And like I said, a lot of the purchases that I made and I did it during Halloween, it was like towards the very end. Y'all, Michaels had some phenomenal sales. I think I literally bought something, like I bought a ton of stuff and it was literally like $20. And I was like, okay, I literally just got like a whole body, like a plastic body. I had like three or four, four different skulls. I had some rocks in there, I had a candle in there. I, I had all kinds of stuff and it was so dirt cheap. So really look at your holidays and when things are coming up so that you can start buying things and collecting them and putting them off to the side. And then of course my partner teacher bought a few things like she did the chests, um, she did the backdrop, the fishing, fishing nets and things like that. So we kind of shared it too. And that's another thing too. And I know Hope King has said this constantly is, you know, if you don't have to do it all by yourself, ask your grade level, hey, if we all put in and we all do this together, we can find a room that is vacant inside of the school and we can set it up and then we can all use it throughout the week so that you're not stressed out and having to do it all by yourself. Um, it was a little stressful for us. But I think the only reason was is because it was our very first transformation for a one and done and, you know, it's done in one day. So that part of it was stressful. And then it was also trying to figure out how to incorporate that individualization as well and making sure that each of the groups were getting exactly what they were working on versus everybody working on the exact same thing. Because we do have kids who are all on different levels. So that part was stressful, but now that we're looking at doing a couple of more that we will look at in the future. So I think the next one is probably like the end of January, beginning of February. And then the, the last one will probably be towards um, April, May-ish. So when we start looking at doing some of those, we have a really better understanding of what it is that we are going to be doing and how we're going to do it. And I feel like we're not going to be as stressed out. I will say that there are some room transformations that are way easier. I know a lot of people have been doing the spy, um, spy transformations, I've seen people do um, the bat caves, which are really, really cool. And all it is, is you just putting up plat black, you know, tablecloths or black paper, whatever your school has that you can use, utilize it. You know, you can put up black paper all around your classroom. So you can have a really cool effect just by doing something so simple as just covering your walls with black paper. Um, and kindergarten, when I did do this, it wasn't a huge, just like one and done type event. Um, I did it based on our themes. So if we were learning about harvest and when harvest came around, it was about the apples, the trees, the corn, the pumpkins, our room completely transform transformed into like almost a farm with the harvest feel of it. I had trees up. I had the pumpkins all over the ground and the leaves and I had apples everywhere. So we made it feel like that. Um, and then once Winter Wonderland came around, I covered everything with snow and then I made, you know, snow trees versus just apple trees up in our room. So things like that just can transform kids and make them feel, oh, wow, this is super cool. And it gives them an experience that some of them will never have. So definitely something to look into. You don't have to go above and beyond and like spend a ton of money on things like this. You can definitely figure out ways to cut corners, um, either sharing it with some other teachers that are inside of your school or you just purchasing things a little bit by little bit along the way. And then in the very end, you're going to have a huge amount of stuff that you can incorporate into various different types of transformations. So it was a really, really great day. Um, definitely some things that we would do different, just looking at how many tasks that we had. Um, and uh, 
that was really it. I think the tasks was the biggest thing. So just looking at how many tasks that you're doing and really making sure that you're giving the kids enough opportunity to be able to um, complete the entire goal. So it wasn't that big of a deal because we did come back later on and complete them as, you know, their individual groups, but the whole setup was gone. So um, they loved it. I mean, even the other day when we said, you know, what was your favorite memory? It was Throwback Thursday, last Thursday. And we said, what was your memory, favorite memory of the first date of, not first date, but of fourth grade? And so many of them were like, pirate day, pirate day, pirate day. Okay, so my hair probably looks like a hot mess and I'm really, really, really sorry. Um, it is now the end of the day and my room is semi back together, semi. Everything got taken down. Sorry, I have my lights off, but I can show you guys. I'm gonna leave those up until Monday afternoon. The corn is still here. The boat's still here. I'm gonna have my husband come and help me to actually pull that down and take it apart. But those are gonna come down so that the flags can come up on Monday afternoon. But everything pretty much got back to the way it was, minus the ceiling and the ship. So that's a bunch of stuff. We forgot to bring our tub to be able to put all of that inside of, so that's gonna have to wait until Monday afternoon. But majority of it got done, which is nice. It's not too, too messy. <laughs> At least learning will hopefully happen here on Monday. Um, so, a quick reflection on today. It was absolutely amazing. It was very much well worth everything that we did and I'm really shiny because I'm sweating so I'm really sorry um like I think and this went for my partner teacher as well but like we were kind of standing outside of our hallway kind of gearing all the kids to go into her room because they, we didn't want them coming into this room so that you know they didn't spoil the surprise but whew, look at that um, but we were kind of standing out in the hallway just greeting everybody, telling them to go in there. They're looking at us like we're crazy because we're dressed like pirates. And one, we kind of see one little girl that is like writing on the whiteboard. Well, we didn't have a whiteboard message up. We normally have a whiteboard message up. We didn't have a whiteboard message up. And uh, we're like, why in the world is she writing on there? Like, we don't have anything written up there. And we didn't say anything to her. We were just kind of talking to each other. And we kind of look over and we're waiting to see what she's writing. And it's, she's saying, thank you. Mrs. Backman and then my partner teacher she's like thank you and I was like oh my gosh like we both literally started tearing up because she is the quietest most reserved like she just kind of stays to herself she doesn't really say much and for her to do that like it just broke our hearts and it just well it didn't break our hearts but it made us like so happy that we did everything that we did we are exhausted I will tell you that our feet are killing us I'm going to Jason's Woods tonight, which is going to be exciting. Um, but it was overall a really, really great day. They were engaged. They loved it. They didn't get it done with all of the tasks, but we're going to continue working on some of them. I'm going to take them back and reaffirm some of the things that we worked on um, for their task for reading during small group next week. So it was well worth it. We enjoyed it. They had a blast. They left saying thank you, and this was the best day ever. So that was well worth it um i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you enjoyed the classroom transformation and want to know more about it please make sure to give this video a thumbs up i will talk to you guys really really soon subscribe share it out bye